And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, you'll have to forgive me a little bit here. I am not an art connoisseur. I don't know much about artists in general. And this game here called Mondrian, which is based on the art of Pete Mondrian, is a game in which you are going to be making pictures with these squares here. And I've always, again, as someone who, who is not an artist, to me, it looks like he just put a bunch of colored squares together. And I know that people who are artists consider me an uncultured swine because I think that, but maybe someone can explain to me how that's any different than if I did that. But anyhow, so the, but this game, I mean, I do think they look kind of cool, all those different squares of colors together. In this game, you can make your own painting of squares and maybe someone will buy it from you for many, many, many dollars. Um, this is a dice chucking game. It is a game where you're throwing dice onto a board. Let's take a look. So you're going to have a bunch of cards out here, uh, they're randomly placed out depending on the number of players. So this is a three player setup. It's easier to fit on camera than a four player setup is. Each player is going to start with two dice, but there's four rounds of the game. So in each successive round, you will get another die. So each round you're going to place dice on the ways that you're going to throw dice out. So maybe first, two turn, first turn I do that, second turn I do that, and eventually you'll have all these spots filled up here. Now each one of these is going to be a different way that you're going to be throwing dice onto this board here and you're going to be trying to win these different cards. So how do you throw it on? Well first of all there's throw with your right hand, throw with your left. So I throw with my right hand or I throw my left off. Uh, the next one is throw while covering your eyes. The next one is drop onto the board. Now each person has a paint stick here or a paintbrush, sorry, and you have to drop from that height. And then there's also flick onto the board. Same thing, you'll put the paint stick out here and you flick from at least that far away onto the board. Now, as you're flicking these dice onto the board or getting things on the board, after everyone's dice are on the board, you're going to look at where the dice are. When you are the only person with a die on a card, so for example here, I can take this card because a six is equal to or greater than four. This person here is on the four card, and, but they only have a one. They can't necessarily take that. However, each player starts with a one, two, and three card in their hand. So the difference between one and four is three. So I could place my three card there and take it. Later on, I might take a six or seven card by placing a four there. I mean, if you think about it, there's no way you're gonna get this four, can't get this seven. But if he put a three there or a number that was higher than the three, in its place, then that player could take the seven. If there's two people on the same number, uh, then whoever is higher gets the first chance at taking the card. If they're both the same, whoever threw the die there first gets it. If for some reason you are between two cards and touching two cards, you can take one of the two. When you're throwing a die, if it completely goes off the board, you get one more chance. However, if there's a hole on the board and it lands in that hole, tough luck. So players are going to be doing this over several rounds of the game. At the end of four rounds, you're going to have a handful of cards. At that point, everyone's going to count their cards. And whoever has the fewest cards in their hand, so let's say one player only has seven cards in their hand, the size can canvas that you're going to have is, the, is an even number equal to the smallest person. So if someone had seven cards, then you would make a, something that was six big. So maybe I'm like, all right. I'll use these here. I did much better than that person. So then I make my, I put out my painting here. Ooh, what a beautiful painting. Now your initial score is in numbers. So one, two, six, seven, 11, 13 points for my canvas here. And then you're going to get points equal to whoever has the most blocks in any particular color. Whoever has the most blue gets an extra eight points. Whoever has most yellow gets an extra 10, most red and most black and then you will add those points together and whoever has the highest score is the winner of the game. Now this is the type of game that 
I know is one that I can say I like, but I know it's not for everybody. But I tend to like games where you're taking dice and throwing them onto a board. I have games in my collection. There's a dungeon one where you throw it into a dungeon. This one, you're throwing dice onto a pile of cards. And so I like that. Throw your right hand, throw your left, drop it, flick it, uh, throw your eyes closed. And it's you've got to realize this game is very light. You say, well, isn't there strategy? Well, yeah, okay, let's take the dice out of it. There's strategy. Do you want the cards with the big points on them or do you want the cards that have more blocks on them because the more blocks can help you win those bonuses, which I think I can confidently say you need to win a bonus or you are not going to win the game. There's four bonuses and if you don't win at least one of them, you don't have this. I guess you could have sevens in many different colors and win and that's possible but highly unlikely. So anyhow, so there's that strategy. Do you want to go for big ones or do you want to try to win bonuses and what colors do you go for? So on. But all that strategy doesn't really matter when the fact is you're just throwing dice randomly on the board. And you say, it's not random. Well, yeah. I mean, I can have skill in how I throw the die. There's no way you can have skill to throw it so that it lands a certain side up. And if you do have that skill, then I probably don't want to play many board games with you because you're going to get the numbers you want all the time. So you're throwing these dice on, and I guess, and, and so while there's not skill, you're throwing at a thing, oh man, I only got a two on that one, I want something higher. So you throw another die, you can try to knock other people's dice off. So this game is more of a silly, fun game. The scoring at the end is almost incidental. In fact, one of my favorite games that I have, that I pull out in times like this is often, is a game called Tumbling Dice, in which I like to throw dice down a thing, and there's some skill in where the dice land, but what numbers face up is mostly random but that can be fun. So I look at Mondrian here as a filler style game. It's not that long of a game. You throw dice, you take cards, you throw dice, you take cards, you throw dice, you take cards, you throw dice, you take cards and score and done. So it's a filler. And so it's one that I enjoy. I like the dice are very high quality. They really are good dice. And you guys know that I'm someone who is pretty critical of dice. These are good dice, they roll well. The cards are decent quality. Now, they could be better probably, but they are nice squares. They look good. And forming the painting at the end. Even though that rule about making a painting only as big as what the smallest person has is... It's kind of like this equalizer. Like, you did really well. You got ten cards and Billy Bob only got four. Well, too bad, Sally, but Billy Bob's four. You now only have four. All right, fine. And I guess there's some strategy in picking the end. Again, I, I don't want to make this game sound like it has more tough decisions than it really does. And in fact... If there's one thing I don't like about the game, it's that you have more dice at the end of the game when there's fewer cards in a table, because cards will be disappearing as the game goes by. But what have you. Uh, so if you want a light filler where you're throwing dice on the board and then you get to build it, or you like the art of Mr. Mondrian, well then this is probably for you. I enjoy it, like I said, as something to play in between bigger games. Light, silly, very silly fun Mondrian. Dice Tower of Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.